All right, we're back here on the Chase Thomas Podcast, where I'm now joined by someone who I had the pleasure with uh, speaking before he had coached a game at Gainesville High School. And let me just go ahead and say, Coach, after our conversation, I had a pretty good idea of where your first season was going to go uh, for the Red Kingdom and the, the Gainesville Red Elephants. And this was uh, such a fun season to watch from afar and to get to the point where y'all did in year one was just uh, a big, big starting point for you guys. Are you just as thrilled uh, at this point when you're reflecting? It's December 13th, a couple of days removed from the state title game, the 6A state title game that we'll get into. But like, I, I imagine there's just a lot of like, man, what a year one. You can't, it, it's really, really hard to have a year one quite like you guys just had. Well, first of all, to God be the glory, man. I just, you know, since you and I talked last spring, I think I was yeah. getting ready to go to Memphis to meet with their staff, actually. Mm. Um, and, you know, not, you know, you don't ever know. I mean, you just, you try to put a plan together. You, you know, you got to speak the things that you need to speak to make sure we're believing in those things. We know the ultimate goal is to win a state championship. And, you know, we just, we were about a minute 30 short um, from doing that. Um, but, you know, I can't say enough for our seniors and, you know, it still hurts. So I'm still struggling with it right now and I'll struggle with it for a while because I'm a competitor and it bothers me because it means a lot to me. So, uh, you know, I think that's probably the biggest thing is just, you know, for our kids and our community, you know, what we've been able to do, the revival that we've had, um, the lives that we've changed and, you know, and, and then the challenges that we've put on the next group that's going to be coming into this thing and playing next year in the standard that these guys have raised it to. Well, you've had a couple of days to reflect on the 6A State title game, which was the best game of the weekend. JJSA did a great job, but that was, I'm glad I was able to be locked in and uh, get my notes taking. Uh, it was hilarious that they, I don't know, you didn't see it because you're obviously on the sidelines, but they panned to like, oh, head coach Josh Heupel at the game. It wasn't Josh Heupel. And I was like, that's not Josh Heupel. And they found Josh Heupel a little bit later, but I'm like, that's uh, that's that's not Josh. Were you able to speak with him at all? Uh, I, I didn't. It just, mm. I mean, look, it was raining when we first yeah. got, I mean, the time schedule that you're on to, uh, mm. Is a lot different than your normal time schedule. I mean, you got 30 minutes to warm up and then six minutes to get on the field and be ready to roll. And I mean, it's just what is totally it usually? Different. Uh, well, for me, I mean, we bring our guys in and, you know, whether we're at home or away, we want to get there probably about an hour and 50 minutes before game time. Mm. Um, and then our guys will get dressed and they'll just wear like their pants and their headsets and they'll come out and they'll activate. So, mm. like, We'll do some drills with them, just kind of like what you see NFL players do, and then they'll go back in, put their gear on, and then come back out for warm-ups. But we were not able to do that. So, you know, that was one thing that, you know, I wish we'd have had a little bit more time. But, you know, just to answer your question, I didn't get to, you know, didn't have much time to really talk to anybody, to be honest with you. Yeah, you had a state title game to worry about. Um, and it was great. But outside of the result, now that you've had a couple days to reflect on it, what are you still thinking about from this game? What's still gnawing at you about how uh, the game went? That we were better. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, you know, that's probably what gnaws at me the most is I don't think really everybody, I don't really usually worry about the public. I mean, but mm. I don't think anybody gave us much of a chance to win the game. Um, mm. And then, you know, I guess why would you when, you know, you look at the stats and look what they've been able to accomplish, the players in which they have, and how many four stars and five star kids that they have, and you know, just the matchup itself. Um, but I knew from us, and I knew what kind of plan we would put together. I just knew we would have checkpoints in the game, and you know, I don't mind sharing those with you. I mean, it was, yeah. you know, one of those deals for us was, you know, Sunday when we first met to get ready to play. Mm. Um, I set up checkpoints for our guys and, you know, the first checkpoints, we got to win the first quarter. So mm. in order for that to happen, we couldn't let them just rush us early. We were going to have to stretch them and squeeze them a little bit. And so, you know, end of the first, I think it's three, three. Um, and so we won the first and I told our kids, like, we don't have to be ahead to win the first. You'll know if we won the quarter or not. And then the next checkpoint was win the next nine minutes. And so, mm. you know, we were able to do that. And then, then it was the middle six. And, you know, in the middle six, they got us the last 58 seconds of the first half. And mm -hmm. Gave up a drive. They scored. I think we have a penalty that, that kind of keeps the drive alive. Um, and then we fumbled the ensuing kickoff. And yep. they, one play later, they score. So 
you know, in 58 seconds, they scored 13 points like that. Um, yep. And our kids could have quit. They could have shut it down. They could have believed everybody else and thought, yeah, I guess everybody was right. But, you know, we went in at halftime. Nobody really said a whole lot. We tried to put our adjustments together. We felt good as a staff because we knew offensively we'd only had the ball three times. Um, and, you know, we had kicked two field goals. Mm-hmm. But And that was one of our checkpoints was trying to make sure we score touchdowns. But we had a really good feel for them, I thought, once we got in the red zone from that mo- that point forward. And so mm-hmm. – Start the third quarter off, we go down and score. And so, yep. you know, we, we split the middle, you know, the, the middle six. But the problem is they won it 13 to six. And that was the tail of the end of the game. I mean, when mm. you look at those seven points, um, you know, it's back and forth. We cut it to a one score game where it's an eight point game. Then they run a kickoff back. And, yep. You know, and then we cut it back to a one score game again with about 330 left. And then we kick the ball out of bounds and give them the ball in the 35. And so, you know, we really felt like, you know, in all three phases, we were going to have to play extremely well. And we just didn't play like we needed to play in the little bitty things, those things that keep you. You know, I told our kids today, that's how far away, that's how close we were, but that's how far away we were too. And so we got to do the things to close that gap. And uh, and I think that's, you know, that's one thing that sometimes maybe you have to, you have to lose it to learn how to win it. Um you know, and our kids had never been in that situation before, but I thought they handled themselves well. Mm-hmm. You know, we gave ourselves a chance. We said we get it to the fourth quarter, we'll have a chance to win it, and we did, and then we had a chance to win it. We just, you know, they made a few more plays, and, you know, that minute 30 within the game of those plays made a difference in the game. It was a lot of fun to watch, too, the the conflicting styles, right? Like, they are, they're not going for chunk plays. They're going to just – they're trying to take the top off. Nolan, he's obviously a bigger quarterback, and he was comfortable in the pocket. But they're just looking – I mean, uh, guarding in the slot was a problem. Um, and then the Ohio State kid, 33, yeah. is just – what do you do with that size? Like, there's just – <laughs> what are you supposed to do with that? I turn to my wife as I'm watching notes, and I'm yeah. like, I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. I mean, you just say, hey, tough luck, buddy. I mean, like, <laughs> I, mean it's, I mean, I don't – I mean, yeah. you know, you just, you just try to – give yourself a chance to disrupt him as much as possible. Yeah. So once the ball gets there, if you can try to play through his hands or force him wide, it's just, you know, if it's a 50-50 ball, that ball is right. more like a 90-10 ball with him than it is a 50-50 ball. Um, but I thought defensively we did some really good stuff. I mean, we mm-hmm. just, you know, we got after the quarterback. I mean, we sacked him, I think, four or five times. I thought we got him off his spot some. Um, I thought we played Jeremiah well had like 37 tackles in this game. Yeah, he, he had a bunch, man. <laughs> and mm-hmm. – you know, what's crazy is just we knew they were going to get, you know, their yardage. But I always tell guys when you play really good offense, it's not about stats, it's about stops. And so, hmm. you know, we got to get stops. If we get stops, it don't matter whether they take it down to the 20. And, you know, our guys did a really good job of holding them out of the end zone the first time. Um, you know, we gave up a score on the second one. Um, but then for about eight to nine minutes, I mean, they didn't they didn't score. Um, we held them at bay till the end of the first half. And so – Thought in the third quarter we contained them until the last drive. Um, but, you know, look, it is what it is. It's part of the game of football. You know, we'll learn from it. It's going to hurt for a while because, you know, we – but I do appreciate our kids and their effort and then them trusting what we asked them to do starting a year ago, really today. What in your game plan leading up to this one – was just like, this is just, this is going to be hard for our personnel to defend. Like, this is a matchup that I, this is, this is tough. What you're talking to about do. from an offensive, or yeah, offense to defense. Yeah. Uh, well, when you talk about them offensively, it's just they spread you out so much and they mm-hmm. spread you thin. And then, you know, we're not huge up front D line wise mm-hmm. and they're big. It's just them covering you up and then getting those backs loose. I mean, they had two 1,000 yard backs, yeah. you know, and so. You know, I thought we did a pretty good job of containing their run game. I think the one thing that, you know, they don't run the quarterback a whole lot. And mm-hmm. so, you know, that helps you a little bit. Um, but just not giving up the deep ball, not mm-hmm. giving up the bomb. And I thought we did a really good job of that. And that's the matchup that I think the last couple of rounds before that, you know, we gave up a few deep balls that we'd like to have back. And so, you know, and then tackling them in space, man. I mean, that's, that's the hardest thing in football. I don't care what level you're at, it's tackling in space, but. You know, and that was probably the biggest thing in the game plan was, you know, not letting them score in bunches. And uh, and I thought we did a good job of containing that. And then when you look at them defensively, you know, just they're so big up front, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're just so big. And it's just not a great matchup. But, you know, I think our guys did a really good job of fighting them. 
you know, this is the toughest football team I've ever coached in my 25 years of coaching. Um, and, hmm. I mean, and so I knew we were going to have to have a toughness and an edge about us. And uh, our guys did. And we fought them all night. And the opportunity What makes them had, tough? What makes them the toughest in 25 they, years? It's just the way they live. I mean, this, hmm. it's a tough group, man. I mean, the way they grow up. I mean, they're, you know, I'd probably say 80 to 85% of our kids come from one-parent homes. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they're having to get their baby brothers and sisters ready before they come in at 7 o'clock for practice or workouts. They got to get them ready to go to school, get them to the bus. I mean, they, you know, some of them have to go work just to make sure they're, they're they can pay bills at the end of the month. I mean, it's, it's a lot that goes on for these kids, man. And then mm-hmm. they don't get a whole lot. I mean, you know, we went down the day before. And we went down the day before and spent the night in downtown. And, you mean, I didn't put them up in, you know, the Hotel 6. Nothing against Hotel 6, but <laughs> I put them up in the Hyatt Regency. And, I mean, mm. and, and I mean, you should have just seen them. I mean, like, some of those kids had never been in downtown. Like, they've mm. never seen it. Um, you know, we took them to Center Park before the game on Friday, uh, on Thursday night to watch the 1A because I wanted to get their bearings straight. And so mm. – I think that's the neatest thing for me is the stuff I've been able to give these kids to have a chance to experience. Um, mm-hmm. But they're just tough. I mean, they, they, they've always had their backs against the wall. Um, and then they've always fought through it. And so I knew if I could give them a plan and get them to believe in what we were doing, I knew they were going to fight. I mean, I knew they were going to play hard because there's not been a game where our kids haven't played hard. Baxter Wright played his ass off coach like that man took some hits and he kept getting up and i jumped out of my notes i'm like he's just got a lot of max duggan in him where he yep. just keeps going and keeps taking big shots he's bigger than you think like he looked yep. at me and he, i looked up his size and i was like because he didn't he, he's a big dude and he took a lot of shots and that man is a gamer like just it pops on screen but so many plays where you're in third and short fourth and short and there's nothing there. He goes to his first read, nothing there, and he just takes off. And he is so smart about finding where the sticks are and just getting those drives to keep moving and keep you on the game. But he was he was phenomenal, and I think uh, I hope that doesn't get lost um, it, because of a result because that kid he left it all on the line. Well, I'm glad we got him back. I mean, yeah. it's just uh, you know he's just a special dude. He's got it. I mean, you can't really explain it, but mm. you know he's got it. Um, He's highly competitive. Um, you know, the kid I had my last year at Hoover. Um, yeah. You know, Bennett Meredith. I mean, him and Bennett have a lot of the same mindset. Now, hmm. Baxter's a little bit different. His game's a little bit different than Bennett's. But both of them have the same mindset to where once the game starts, they flip a switch and they play it. They play the game like a linebacker. And, hmm. you know, Baxter, you know, from day one till now, I mean, how he's developed – within our offense because it's not easy. I mean, you know, and the thing is, is like, you know, he's got to understand everything we're doing and he's mm-hmm. got to understand like his strengths and maybe what his deficiencies are and, and then build on those strengths and then stay away from his deficiencies and then continue to try to improve them. And so he's done a really good job of that. Um, you know, I think he was 75% completion rate, um, almost 3,500 yards passing, 40 touchdowns, only four picks. Mm. Um, he had nine rushing touchdowns for over 700 yards. Um, and so look, I mean, that's, I mean, what more productivity do you want out of your quarterback? But I mean, him and Duggins, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good comparison, man. Um, Yeah. I'm going to try to get him to that size by this time next year. (laughs) I like it. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's the other great part is you get him for another year and I mean, that's, that's huge for your program. Well, he's so fired up too. I mean, like it's. You know, me and him were talking last night. We had a little uh, FCA All-Star game around mm-hmm. here, but he just came to watch. We had some players playing in it, you know, and I'm just patting him on the chest. And, you know, I was like, hey, we're going to add about this. That. He goes, Coach, I already started. I'm ready. I mean, like, we're ready. Yeah. I mean, you know, so this this next senior class will be hungry. I think that's what neat about what this senior class did is give these guys a standard. And so we did kind of the passing of the torch today. So, you know, we had a team meeting, and then the seniors come up front and let them say whatever they want to the underclassmen, and then, and then we take them to a academic and recruiting meeting, and then I talk to the older guys. You know, I mean the younger guys. And I say, look, those guys aren't coming back in the door. I mean, mm-hmm. this is now your deal. And I said, in the bar that they raised, like anything less than that is not going to be good. And so mm-hmm. here you go. And so I mean, which was good, man. It's just a uh, it's exciting time here for sure. What made Jeremiah T. Lander so special to coach for you? Yeah, I mean, 
Well, it's funny because him and uh, I'm, I'm not going to say any names, but one of the coaches from Tennessee was here yeah. today. And, you know, Jeremiah's fixing to leave to head up there for bowl practice. Mm. I just told him, it was like, you're getting a, I mean, you're getting a guy that's just intentional. He's so mm. intense because he's intentional. I don't care if it's flex. I mean, I don't care if he's brushing his teeth, <laughs> if he's running on the practice field, or it's inside drill, or it's fourth and one. I mean, he mm. has the same intensity. You know, he's grown spiritually this year. Um, I've been glad about that. Um, he's an unbelievable teammate, unbelievable leader. He's going to put everybody before he puts himself. He doesn't play the game out of a selfish ambition. He plays the game so everybody benefits from it. Um, very respectful, um, but just loves the game. I mean, mm -hmm. loves the game for the pureness of the game, and I think that's why he plays it so well. What made him so good off the edge, too? Because he's obviously picking up tackles, but he was so good pressuring yeah. Aaron Nolan on uh, on Friday night that I was I, I was kind of surprised. And I mean, I'm excited, me being a Tennessee guy here, I'm excited to get him on campus. But um, I did not know the, the pass rush chops were as well, strong that, that as they were. that was something that we kind of evolved in the spring we saw. In the yeah. spring, we thought, you know, a little, couple little packages we'd worked during the spring, we thought, mm -hmm. man, we, we might can – <laughs> to give us an opportunity to get to an even front or yeah. really when we were in the spring, we were actually in an even front in the spring, mm -hmm. but we just didn't feel, feel like from an experience in depth wise, D line wise that we could stay in an even after the summer. So we went mm -hmm. to our three, three odds, odd stuff, but then walking him down um, just allowed some matchups. Cause then you could set the protection. You can get him in the, you know, the matchup that you want him in, um, you know, the bull rush that he, that he had uh, on the, the D1 guy uh, yeah. off the edge and mm -hmm. then, you know, push pulled him and then, you know, makes the sack on the quarterback. I mean, just amazing. And there were some other times in the playoffs where he had some huge sacks for us in some third down situations to where if he don't get home, you know, I mean, I don't know if we, we win the drive or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, now that you have this time, this time off, you talked about the passing of the baton, but um, what are you most excited about working with this new group and getting ready for, for year two at Gainesville? Just that, what it is. I yeah. mean, it's a new group. Um, you know, everybody always asks me, like, what's the, you know, what was the best group you've ever had? And I've always mm -hmm. said the next one, you know? And so, yeah. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I mean, this is a new group. I, I'm excited, too, from a – I mean, a little bit of a standpoint, my son's a senior this year mm -hmm. coming up. And so it's going to be neat. And you know, it's going to be a little bittersweet coaching him up his last year. But, you know, this will be my fourth year to get to coach him and watch how these guys have developed and grown close together. Because, I mean, there's a few guys that were that were juniors that were leaders on this team. But, you know, now they get to really talk more. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, Baxter's one of those guys. Sky's one of those guys. Our center, Noe, he's one of those guys. Um you know, we got some guys that I think are going to have an opportunity. Now, you know, we got to develop some guys. I mean, we really mm -hmm. do in some certain spots. But, you know, we got a core nucleus coming back. I mean, one of our leading receivers will be coming back. Um, of course, Sky's back, Baxter's back. You know, as far as playing time, four out of our five offensive linemen will be back on offense. So, you know, we're looking at seven out of the 11 that are back there, you know, defensively. You mm -hmm. know, we've got to grow some depth in the secondary and at linebacker, but I like what our front brings to us. Um we just may have to move some guys around. Um, you know, our punter's back, but he also kicked some this past year. Our deep snapper's back, which is always huge. Our holder's back. And so, you know, we just need some key spots where guys have got to develop. And, uh, and, but I think that's what's neat because it's a mm. new group. It's their time, their chapter. And I think sometimes as a coach, we, we get lost in the process of just, you know, every year doing the same thing. But it's new for every group because when you become a senior, it's your turn. You know, yeah. even though you'd love to revert back to when you're a junior, but when I was a senior, I never really thought about when I was a junior. I just thought about, hey, I'm a senior now, so this is my turn, my opportunity. Mm. And so, you know, we'll talk about what it takes to be a senior and, you know, about serving others and not wake up to be served every day and and know that, you know, I walk in and I always snap my finger. And T-Lander said it today to all the guys. He said, the one thing I remember is the first meeting we ever had with Coach Niblett, and he snapped his finger. And he said, hey, this is how fast it goes by. Mm -hmm. and, you, and so this morning he snapped his finger and to the kids and said, hey, this is how fast it's going to go by, like Coach said. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's what it's all about. Just, you know, the kids are listening. That's for sure. I love it. Uh, Coach, we'll end on this. 
Christmas coming up in two weeks. What's your favorite Christmas family tradition that you got going on with the Nibbler family? And I'm not sure about that. I mean, no. Well, I mean, tradition. I mean, yeah. God, I mean, we still lay all our kids' stuff out on the couch. I mean, like, okay. like they were four years old. I mean, <laughs> like, so I my like parents my did stuff that too. To be laid out too. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I think for me, I mean, the last seven years, six or seven years, I've had to, we went to Orlando for the, you know, the Under Armour All American game, and I'm not going to this year. Um, mm-hmm. And so, I think we're going to ch- start some new traditions this year, whether it be okay. going up in the mountains and you know look at lights and go eat or there you, you know, go. whatever we can do. We're we're going to find some opportunities, but yeah, I, I like to eat some goodies, even though I work out all the time. But yeah, we'll put a few pounds on probably. Eat some goodies. What are some goodies, Coach? Uh, well, are- my wife made for our staff, so I had to hand those out today. So yeah, my wife every year makes you know white chocolate pretzels and Ooh. peanut chocolate covered peanut butter balls. Yeah. yeah. They're, ridiculous um, <laughs> and so we'll do that we'll make mm-hmm. some goodies and my daughter gets home we'll make some cookies and stuff like that and so and then we like to just watch like christmas movies you know all right what's your go-to oh. what's your go-to christmas movie what do you think's mm. the best one is it jingle all the way are you a home alone guy a christmas story uh, what are you? it's a little bit of all of them so i like okay Elf. i mean I Elf. Like Elf. Yeah, okay i do like that one um, yeah i like christmas story that's mm-hmm. one of my favorite ones of all time um shoot your eye out uh um yeah i mean and then i like you know christmas vacation also now you gotta can't leave yeah. that out so. no you cannot leave that one out uh coach this has been great um congrats again on a fantastic season i'm excited to watch you continue to build this program and uh, as Gainesville gets back to uh, what it's been in the past and it's on the right track. And um, I'm, I'm very excited going forward. Uh, how did the good folks check out uh, what you've got going on this offseason and support uh, the Gainesville football program as uh, the offseason's underway? Well, we'll start getting things going on social media. I mean, we'll give our kids a little bit of time off. And then about mm. that second week of January, we'll, uh, we'll start rolling. And then, you know, we'll, you know, people get to see us on footage on, uh, you know, recruit the G um, mm-hmm. and recruit the G or games for football. Um, but yeah, hey, to God be the glory. I mean, it's a blessing. Let's make this a yearly thing, Chase, and look forward to it and uh, go big red. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coach, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much and happy holidays, sir. Thank you, brother. Have a good one.